What's that that you're rolling out? The new line set. What's it do? It's what the travel or the uh, refrigerant is going to travel through this little line, this is the liquid line, and it gets sucked back to the the uh, condenser through the big line, the uh, suction line. And from how the old unit looked and how the refrigerant looked, it looked like there might have been a burnout or something, so it makes sense on why they're getting a new line set, because that means that the old line set was probably filled with uh, debris and just dirty refrigerant or oil, all stuff like that. Now what's that? This is the thermostat wire, eight wire. Thermostat wire? Yes. Why does that come out here? Because I tape it to the line set so that I can run it inside all the way down to where Christian's at, to the furnace, so he can wire it into the board. And then I'll also have the other end out here. I can wire into the condenser so that when the, uh, when the thermostat set to whatever you want it to, gives the call to the board, the board sets it up the way it needs to be sends it out to the condenser if you want to fire AC, and then that's what runs your, uh, your AC. Bye Christian, let me know. Rule number one of running line sets, be very gentle with it, because if this thing, this copper gets really easy to, to bend and kink. And if you kink it, you gotta cut it out. And that's just that's just never fun. That's just an extra brace. Alright, coming up. Just let me know when you're ready. All right. All right, ready? Yes, sir. Oh! I'm bending it downwards now, so give me just a sec. All right, feed. directly towards you. Good, and now we're done here. Now back to the top we go. Um, five, six feet. Give me a sec though. And now we just wait for him to roll off the rest and feed it about five more feet and we'll be good. Just let me know when you're ready, brother.
the cool thing about raising the suction line is that since it's the bigger line, it's a little bit harder to get all the way around it. So if it looks a little bit bad, it's all right because it'll be it'll be covered up with the donk. As you know, as long as it still seals, then that's really all that matters for it. But you want to at least try to make the liquid look decent. I'm checking for leaks with this mirror. Any pinholes, any big holes, any holes at all. Because the last thing I want is to pump this thing up and there be leaks. And then we have to go back through, rebraze the holes where it's leaking at, and then recharge it with whatever refrigerant we lost, how much we lost. These holes can be super tiny and really, really easy to miss. So you just gotta make sure that you don't miss any of the holes. And then afterwards, after I'm done brazing, I'm gonna throw some nitrogen in it and pressure test it. And that's gonna also confirm that I didn't miss any spots, but that's just pretty much just a backup for if I did miss any small holes, it'll tell me that it's not holding pressure and I need to fix it, find the leak and fix it. So, and then we take a, we pull a vacuum on it and uh, that'll also tell me if there's any leaks if I missed it on the pressure test too. So there's four, four ways I can make sure I don't leave here with a leak. Because you can always pressure it up, check that way, spray, spray bubbles on it to make sure that there's nothing leaking. Run a vacuum on it, that'll make sure it's not leaking. So really there's no excuse for a leak after an install.